We're going to start with former President Trump back in Manhattan this morning to be questioned under oath in the civil fraud case brought by New York's attorney general. The former president just arrived at the New York attorney general's office moments ago. And I want to bring in NBC's Rahina Ellis in New York City for us. Florida State Attorney Dave Ehrenberg and Joyce Vance, former U.S. Attorney in Alabama and MSNBC legal analysts. Okay, Rahima, starting with you, talk to us about what we can expect to unfold in the coming hours. Well, we know that Letitia James, the New York State Attorney General, wants to ask him questions about this civil lawsuit that she's filed against him, claiming that he engaged in a habitual, routine habit of filing false claims about the value of his properties in order to get good bank loans, and that would be on hotels, high-rises, and golf courses. It also names Trump, his three oldest children, and the Trump uh, organization. And if she's found that there's merit on this, she's seeking 250 million dollars in damage as well as uh, something like a five-year ban on Trump doing any sort of real estate deals in the state of New York. Now, whether he will answer questions about that or, or not, as he did not answer questions when he was uh, deposed back in August, he took the Fifth Amendment, which is his legal right to do so. But he was talking last night and this morning on social media. He called Letitia James, the uh, attorney general here. He said that she is racist. He said this and all of the investigation is against him are ridiculous. He said that this is also a part of an effort to engage in election interference. Will he say any of those things when he's questioned? We don't know. We're waiting to find out. Anna? Joyce, Trump has been deposed as part of this investigation before, as Rahama just outlined, and our reporting is he pleaded the fifth more than 400 times initially. That was actually before he was formally charged in this civil suit, the AG's office did release a portion of that video from his earlier deposition. Let's take a look. Accordingly, under the advice of my counsel and for all of the above reasons, I respectfully decline to answer the questions under the rights and privileges afforded to every citizen under the United States Constitution. Same answer. Same answer. Same answer. Same answer. Same answer. According to the New York Times, people familiar with Trump's thinking said as recently as of last night, he wasn't expected to take the fifth this time. So, Joyce, if that's the case, why then and not now? The, the answer to questions and depositions really depends on the question. So the former president may have an intention of not repeating his previous performance that he was mocked for, because this is someone who has said the only people who need to assert the Fifth Amendment are people who are guilty. Um, but now Tish James is, is very close to finalizing all of the allegations in this case, which is often referred to as a sort of a corporate death penalty. This could terminate Trump's ability to do business in New York. The focus of her questions will have to determine his answer. He might go in intending not to assert the Fifth Amendment, but he doesn't know exactly what she has up her sleeve at this point. Dave, again, we're talking civil charges here, not criminal like the Manhattan DA's case involving the hush money payments. But how could one impact the other? Anna, if he takes the fifth, which I still expect him to do, that can create a negative inference for his civil trial, and then he could lose that civil case. But if he doesn't take the fifth and speaks freely, those statements can be used against him in his upcoming criminal trial. So he's in a big, a bit of a trick bag here. I expect him to take the fifth hundreds of times again, uh, even though he once said that the mob takes the fifth and people who are guilty take the fifth. Well, he now has a new appreciation of our constitutional rights. So I expect him to do that. Uh, but both cases are similar. One involves financial fraud. The other one involves the hush money payments. So there is not much overlap as of yet. But if he lies during the deposition, that gets him a perjury charge. And if he speaks freely, that'll be used against him in the criminal case. Dave, we know how much his image of being this very wealthy businessman means to him. Could he potentially have more to fear with this case than the criminal one because of the financial damage he may be hit with? 
yeah, that hits him where it hurts in his pocketbook and his business reputation. So I expect him to fight this. But look, this is a tough situation for him, because unlike a criminal case where you need to prove things beyond any reasonable doubt, Letitia James in a civil case only needs to prove that Trump did it by a preponderance of the evidence, a much lower standard. Is it more likely than not that Trump did it? So there are advantages to proceeding in a civil way compared to in a criminal trial where the defendant gets a lot more constitutional rights and prosecutors have to prove things beyond any reasonable doubt. Joyce, let me pivot just slightly. Trump's former attorney and fixer, Michael Cohen, is a, a central witness in at least a couple of investigations, definitely in the criminal case. Now, Trump is suing Cohen, seeking half a billion dollars in damages, arguing his former lawyer violated the attorney-client relationship. The complaint also accuses Cohen of, quote, spreading falsehoods about Trump likely to be embarrassing or detrimental. What do you make of it? Right. So when you abuse legal process, you can intimidate a witness. And intimidating witnesses is something that judges and prosecutors react strongly to. It can even form the basis for criminal charges. I think that's unlikely here with a lawsuit, but it becomes additional evidence about the lengths that Trump will go to to try to suppress evidence of his criminal conduct. It's a really bad look with the criminal charges pending. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if this lawsuit goes forward, because when you're the plaintiff in a lawsuit that involves certain obligations, he will ultimately have to sit down for a deposition if he intends to go forward with this case. I don't think we'll see it go that far. Dave, the prosecutor pursuing criminal charges against Trump, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, was sent another threatening letter yesterday. It had white powder in it. The letter inside read, you effing fat pig. Now, the powder turned out to be non-hazardous, thankfully, but this just speaks to how volatile the situation is right now. How do, how do you turn the temperature down? Well, a lot of this is spurred on by Trump's comments, calling Alvin Bragg an animal. I mean, uh, his comments are instigating people in his rabid base. So one way to turn down the temperature is for the judge to step in and say, cool it, and impose a partial gag order. Now, you don't want to impose a total gag order yet. That could impede his First Amendment rights, especially because he's running for president. But I think something may need to be done because it could escalate from here. So that's a problem for Donald Trump, because if there is a partial gag order in place, I don't know if he's able to abide by it. And if he violates that, he could be sanctioned with up to 30 days in jail. That'd be the quick way for him to end up wearing an orange jumpsuit.